Awesome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. This is podcast, I believe, number 28, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll have to, may have to revisit that, but we'll put that in the, in the heading of the uh, video when we post it on YouTube. But Chase Shirt, Cole McCoy, uh, we're excited. Up, everybody. Another episode of In the Trenches uh, podcast. We've switched from the audio platform now over to the video platform. It took us long enough to do that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we just want to kick things off. We've got a good one for you guys today. Talk a little bit about um, overcoming objections preemptively uh, instead of waiting until they fall in your lap. Cole had a big, big week last week, uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And I uh, just want to throw this out there to everybody that's maybe tuned in right now. If you're listening to this after the fact, uh, you can go to FS Nation, E-F-E-S Nation uh, on YouTube. You can hit the little bell, the subscribe button, get plugged in, and uh, we'll get you guys uh, you know, updated on any new content that comes out. And then also you can go to FS Facebook, EFES or Equity Final Expense Services. Hit the like button. Uh, get you plugged in with some of the stuff we're doing. We don't do this podcast for recruiting. Uh, we do it to throw out content to uh, insurance agents out there uh, who are out there doing it each and every day. And so my big buddy here, he's one of the best in the business. He had a big, big weekend. I thought I had a good weekend. It was an okay weekend. You had an absolute monstrous weekend. How much total production did you do? I did about ten grand um, from like Friday to Sunday. Okay, so where most people are ecstatic over ten grand in one week, that's a record for a lot of people, understandably. So you went out and did ten thousand from Saturday, Friday to Sunday. That's huge, man. Let's talk a little bit about what made that week happen. Um, I know we're going to go into the overcoming objections and stuff like that. Let's talk about first and foremost anything in particular that just kind of came out of this, this event this past weekend. Um, anything you ran into in the home, something that maybe stood out to you that you want to share with everybody? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I will say, Chase, is I don't believe that I took out any magic sauce. You know, I, um, I, I, don't, I didn't have any magic tricks. It was – I just bought a lot of leads, man. I, I was, I've been traveling a lot, training agents, and, you know, I've been all over the, the country. It feels like um, – not to brag or say, look at me, it's just – I just had a lot of leads built up. And so I knew that I just had a lot of people to catch up to. So I had a ton of activity. I think I basically have worked pretty close to 40 leads uh, when it was all said and done by the end of Sunday. And so um, it was just a lot of hard work. I, I was going to come home Sunday night and I told my wife that, you know what, I got some momentum and she was super cool about just letting me stay out and, and obviously miss, miss, miss the girls this weekend. But, I'm really glad I did, man. There, there's a lot of cool uh, little things that happened. I mean, where folks were – obviously, half that production was just folks who didn't really want – they said, hey, I already have life insurance. I don't really need this. And so it was, it was fun overcoming that and then helping them uncover their, their policies to where I could put them in a much better scenario. Um, so it was very – that part of it was very rewarding over the weekend as well. That's awesome. I, I know that you were having a big weekend because I was calling you on Saturday when I was out and about. And I was super stoked to have had close to, you know, I think it was about $2,000. And then when it was all said and done, the weekend. we were shooting the breeze about, you know, football and stuff like that. And you're like, dude, I think I, I, think I hit like over 10000 this weekend. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I was very excited. I, I don't want to pretend like doing 10000 over a weekend is normal or, oh, that's no big deal. I do that all the time. I, I would never pretend that way. It's certainly an awesome weekend, but it wasn't magic sauce. I just I had a lot of leads and I worked really hard. So, well, let's break this weekend down. Let's break down what made it happen for you. Obviously, you made it happen, but let's talk about everything that kind of fell into place here uh, for mm -hmm. the take place. First and foremost, how did the weekend start? How did Friday start for you and uh, kind of kick things off? Yeah, Friday was interesting, Chase. Um, I, I I probably did. 18 to 20 door knocks. I don't remember the number. And I was, you know, I have little delivery notices. I don't think I have any in front of me here, but uh, I was putting delivery notices on doors and yeah, there you go. Yep. That right there. And I only got in front of one couple. In fact, this couple, I had door knocks and put a delivery notice on and I was uh, getting ready to pull out and they pulled in, they drove through their own yard to like cut me off. I'm like, Oh no, I'm in trouble. You know, they're <laughs> mad at me. And they were the sweetest old couple, and they, they let me come in and sit down, and, and um, they needed some help rearranging some things. They, they were trying to, to – uh, they're trying to move to another another living space. But 
um, they, they told me that the same as Miss Marjorie. She said, uh, cool. We already have this taken care of. I'm, I'm not looking for any more insurance or whatever. I had, cause I had the card in their handwriting, you know, and I said, awesome. Uh, which, which company do you have? And they said, well, I have so-and-so company. It was a company that's notorious for doing guarantee issue policies. And I said, awesome. I'm very, very familiar with them, Miss Marjorie. Um, in fact, my job today is just to, to kind of want to answer your questions, but to take a look at what you have and make sure that you're getting all the benefits that, that you're entitled to slash uh, to make sure that, that you're getting the most bang for your buck. So go grab that for me. I'd love to show you how that works and see if I can help you. And when it was all said and done, um, her husband's policy, his name is Jack. Um, he, he was like 77. They had him marked down as a 71 year old. They had him marked down as a female. So the rate was all jacked up. Also, they were on a two year waiting period. And so it was this whole thing where Friday was like a huge day and it was all in one house. I did like 3,500 out of that one house because they had already been paying for these policies. And uh, it went from them thinking that I was just there to get them to, to, to pull one over on them, get them to add a bunch more insurance. I was able to put them in a much better situation. So that was pretty cool. And that was the only, that was the only sales I had Friday. It was all out of that one house. So talk about making you a little bit nervous, you know, that, that those fall off the books. That's a pretty, pretty big chargeback, but uh, no, I think they're solid. And in fact, Miss Marjorie called me over the weekend. They, they need help moving some stuff and um, they don't really know anybody down there. So I'm, maybe try and go back down and take a couple hours with them. So, so you anyway, found, so, yeah, so that was cool. All kinds of stuff messed up on their applications. The husband. Oh yeah. 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 And, and, and that happens often. I mean, you know, and I don't want to throw any companies under the bus here, but you're going to, a lot of times you have companies that where their agents clean sheet. So for instance, uh, there's a company out there that's notorious. They don't take blood thinners. They, well, they'll take it, but it's modified. Uh, where there's a two-year waiting period, essentially, or they don't take COPD, or they have this or that. But um, nine times out of ten, you're going to look at these policies, and the agent said, well, they don't have this issue, or they don't have this issue. And I'm showing them on the application, the client said, look, if uh, if you pass away, they're going to look into this, and this claim likely isn't going to pay. But at the same time, you know, you can save these people money or, or what have you. So, um yeah, that, that's something that certainly wasn't unique to these people. You run into it a lot, um, which is why our job is so important, but also the opportunity is so big because a lot of these people are already buyers. They just have one of those companies that maybe isn't an optimal solution for what they can qualify for. And so you have a wonderful chance to get in there and, and just put them in a better position and make a great living doing it. So. So that, that was, that was a nice, even though it was one house, I don't, I don't care if it was one house. That's a big day. It's a great day. Um, let's yeah. talk about Saturday. How did Saturday go? How did it get started? Did it get kicked off on the right foot or was it just all over the road? You know, I'm trying to even remember Saturday, Chase. Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember Saturday. Um, I, I seem to remember Saturday being a day where it wasn't, I think I did uh, like $1,800 on Saturday. And that was a day where I did a bunch of door knocks. Uh, you know, I probably probably drove around for 10 hours. And I, I believe I wrote three apps for right around uh, 1800 that day. So um, that was a scenario where I just, you know, you're, you're walking in. I had a guy who literally had, a, I mean, almost anything wrong, everything wrong you could think about. So, I, you know, I had but he didn't have insurance and wanted some had another lady who had the same policy as the day before, uh, same company. She had two year waiting period and didn't realize it. And I had another guy who I don't need, I'm trying to remember, you know, when you write apps that quick, they all kind of run, run together. But I know I did about 1800 on, on Saturday. So anything come out of Saturday that stuck with you, made an impression on you that you would want to share with everybody? Yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely would want to maybe give an overall impression of the weekend. I mean, because cause Sunday is where it all happened. You know, I had a big weekend as well, or a big day as well. Got a lot a lot of production where, you know, folks uh, – it, it, was, it, was, it was replacing policies that had waiting periods. I mean, I kept running into that. But then I had a couple people who didn't have anything as well. And as I was – because I knew we, we wanted to do another one of these podcasts, Chase, and 
um, I was thinking, man, what what can I bring from this weekend? Because I don't want to, I don't want the the illusion to be that it was easy. I don't want the illusion to be that, oh, Coldest has this magic formula. But the overwhelming impression that I had was I wasn't really facing a lot of like at the end of your presentation, you 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 lay your your three prices out on a piece of paper and say which one works best for you. I wasn't getting a lot of objections at that point. And, and the overwhelming sentiment that, that I was coming away with was that I, I, I was thinking through the presentations and I was proactively overcoming objections. And it, it just became noticeable maybe the way that I was, I was just explaining things and I get some momentum. And, you know, there are times where I, I don't feel like I'm that sharp in the house, but when you kind of get that momentum and that confidence and you're, you're, you're rolling through your presentation, you really start tying things down properly. And so I think what I can bring to the insurance final expense universe is uh, how to proactively overcome objections. So basically you're closing and, and, and you're rebuttaling and you're overcoming objections before they actually happen. So that way, you know, if they, they can either say, look, I just don't want this, you know, but they're going to have to, to, contradict themselves if they're even getting to that point. And so I think it would be really helpful. Go ahead. I'm sorry, as you go into it, were you feeling it day two, day three, day one, or is it something that you gradually work yourself into? Or were you just feeling it day three? Like, man, no matter what, that first presentation, you knew you were overcoming it no matter what. You know, well, I overcame that first one on Friday and that was a big deal, a big gap, kind of got my weekend going. I knew I had a lot of leads. I was going to be away from my family and and I really wanted to make it count, you know? And so when, when I, when I hit that, that big, that big day Friday, I didn't have one house um, that really propelled me into the weekend. And, and, you know, it's like, you know what, that, that was $3,500 that paid for my leads. I paid for my hotel, I paid for my gas that, you know, paid my bills for the month, right. Whatever it was. And now everything else is just, is just gravy on top. You know, you know, my wife and I have some goals we're hitting where it's going to that fund. Right. So, um, it just felt, it just felt good. I mean, I, I, I can't really pinpoint a moment other than just like, as I was reflecting back on it, some of the things that I was, that I was noticing myself doing that just seemed really sharp. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't getting a lot of pushback. And I realized this might be something helpful to go over with for, for agents who are, who are maybe getting caught in presentations where they're, they don't have control or they're having a hard time getting people to get the policies or, you know, they're saying things like, uh, I really want to think about this or whatever. Proactively overcoming these things, I think is huge. So that's really what I wanted to spend some time on today. Well, let's jump right into it, man. Let's talk about how you, maybe a couple of scenarios that you ran into where you were feeling it, you were, you were already, uh, you know, in the vibe there, let's talk about some of those situations. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think where it comes down for me is just having a solid presentation and using tie downs in the midst of your presentation. By a tie down, what I mean is it's, it's, it's a small sale in the midst of your presentation. So you're a sale by definition, is just a transfer of belief, but getting their agreement with you at multiple points throughout the presentation. So that way, when the time comes time to close and get them to grab their checkbook, um, you've already made six or seven little sales throughout the presentation to make that decision so much easier, like just a natural progression. So I just want to start with even in getting in the door and, and getting into the, the reasons why they sent the card in just assumptively closing, um, even those little things. So, um, I, I, this might even be a little bit of a refresher on a presentation for folks as well. So, um, my warm up, to be honest with you is, is not impressive. It's a few minutes and I really like to sell how busy I am. Say, look, Miss Mary, I look at my watch. I'm going to have to give you the quick version. Just going to take a few minutes. You request this information. I want to make sure we got you taken care of. Does that sound good? When I say things like that, that's my first tie down. It's a, it's a little thing, you know, they're agreeing that, 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 um, that I'm going to help them get this taken care of in my mind. So then I just straight up ask, I say, Miss Mary, you know, why did you send this card in? And if they can't give me a reason, then I'll say, well, most people do it for one of three reasons. And, you know, we've gone over this before, but you know, in, in a quick sense, 
Um, reason one is they didn't have any insurance. We're looking for something. Reason two is they had a policy, but want to make sure they were getting a good deal. Um, reason three is they had a good policy, but wanted to add a little bit of extra for their family. Um, and I said, which one do you fall into? And, and I'm always trying to get them to choose and, and put them in a situation where now they're making a decision through that lens of here's this gap or here's this thing I want to fill. So I make them answer that. That's pretty much sale number two is tying them down to that reason. So I would say half of my production this, this weekend, Chase, was dealing with that right there where folks like, well, to be honest, Cole, I already have a good policy and I'm not really looking for anything more. Well, now we have to stop and kind of transition to a place of, okay, awesome. You know, now let's figure out how to get them to get that policy because I know that it's more than likely a company that's not putting them in an optimal solution compared to what else is out there, right? And what you probably have in your bag. So what I'm doing at that point, just a quick tip on how I get them to go get their policy, which we might've already t hit on, on this, but so, uh, I say, awesome. Which company do you have? I'm, I'm probably very, I probably know who they are and they'll say, blah, blah, blah. I'm, again, I I'm, don't want to throw a bunch of companies under the bus and I'll say, awesome. I'm very familiar with them, Miss Mary. And, and, and in fact, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, I'm, I know a little bit about that company. I take pride in at least knowing a couple, two, three uh, things about a company to, to, to kind of gain that trust and, and build, you know, you have that knowledge against trust with the client. So awesome. Well, they've been around since, you know, 1950s. They help a lot of seniors in the area. Um, I'm actually very familiar with them, Ms. Mary, and the, there actually may be extra benefits in that policy. Um, most people keep theirs in the freezer and I'll, I'll kind of laugh with them or they'll, they'll keep theirs in a cabinet or, or in a safety deposit box. Where do you keep your policy? Yeah, you know, let's make them answer. I say, awesome. Now I know where the policy is. They say, oh, it's, it's, it's in, uh, in the safe. Go grab that for me. Um, now there's all kinds of training on how to get the policy. If they don't have it, how to call and how to talk to them. That's not what this, this, this was on, but um, getting them to get that policy because you're at that point, if you know it's one of those companies that maybe not, maybe is a two year waiting period company or, you know, they're going to put things like blood thinners and COPD and diabetes and neuropathy and blah, blah, blah. They're going to put them modified. Um, you want to let the carrier hang themselves and that makes the sale for you because you're going through it and you're showing them, did you know your policy did this? Nine times out of 10, they don't. Awesome. Well, let me make sure I can get you, you know, fight for it to get you a good deal. And so that's really where that comes. So I'll, I'll transition from there. I think we can do a whole other call on that aspect of it. Um, but the other thing that really builds a lot of value in the midst of the presentation, Chase, and stop me if I'm rambling, if you have something to do. Cool. Okay. Um, so the other thing I really like to hit on is the agent versus broker explanation. And I say it something like this. I'll say, uh, Chase, are, have, has anyone ever told you the difference between an agent and a broker before? And they'll, be like, uh, they'll say, I don't know, or kind of, or yeah. And they'll say, uh, broker makes you go broke, you know, or whatever. Now, no, 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 nothing like that. But I'll say, you know, an agent comes and, and, and talks to you and they represent one insurance company. Um, and I'll mention companies that, you know, maybe they see on TV or they get them through the mail. And that's an opportunity to kind of highlight some of the downfalls of these companies. And I'll say, but, but Miss Mary, what I do is I'm what's called a broker. But, but here's the thing. There's not a one size fits all policy out there, right? And I'm sitting there shaking my head. If there was, there'd only be one company out there. And so I said, what I do, I'm what's called a broker. And I'm able to represent. And I'll throw out some more 50, 60 companies, which is true. We am able to represent that many. And what I can do is I can shop around for you. So that beats the I want to shop around objection and think about it. But also, Miss Mary, my job is to come here and fight for you to make sure that you're getting the most optimal benefits possible for your situation. So what I'm going to do today is look and see um, who, who is going to give you a really good deal? And I'm going to fight for you. You know, by, by the time we're done, I'm going to make sure you're in a better situation than, than before I came. Does that sound fair? I'm shaking my head. So that's another sale. That's a tie down because if they say that they agree right there, that's their agreement that I'm going to fight for them and I'm going to find them something that's going to put them in a great situation. And I, obviously, I've, go ahead. Seen, I've seen you do this many times. Yeah. We had the opportunity to ride together. 
Um, you're very smooth with it. Um, the one thing I want to press to everybody out there is you're not overbearing though. Like the, the phrase you made where well, go get that policy form, you know, you do it in a very sweet demeanor. You're though you're not asking a question. Anytime I've noticed you going through your process, whether it's male, female, it doesn't matter. You are in command, but you're not over demanding. Yeah. Um, I love that part. I want to throw that out there for everybody listening. In. Yeah, I, I think I think part of closing and the you know proactively overcoming things, Chase. Yeah, is sometimes I don't realize I do this, but um, I think for me it's getting their buy-in. So doing saying things in a way that that compels them to action. And so when you show them, hey, here's a problem. I have the solution, but I need your help to to get to that solution. That's what you're communicating. And folks are typically more eager to jump into that space and, you know, help themselves, you know, is what it comes down to. And when you can communicate that you're on their side and they feel that sincerity, you know, you have to be sincere with this stuff. You can't walk in and, and, you know, say all these things and say corny jokes and, and then they can't feel you need to empathize and make good eye contact and mirror their body language. And if they're talking about something, you listen. Um, all those things go a long way when you're saying what you have to say, it becomes important. Those and so that is huge. Way, yeah, those absolutely. Way. Absolutely. So, but at that point, I mean, we're just getting into the present. We're just getting into the nitty gritty and figuring out who, what they have and what they're looking for. And I've already basically made three or four small sales to get their agreement that, that this is what we're going to do. And so you're just guiding them in this process. Um, I think the next thing to, to, to highlight is uh, asking them if they've ever had to deal with a funeral. So you know, who was responsible for the funeral, Miss Mary? You know, where did they, was it a burial or cremation? Like what happened? And this is a tragic story, you know, that they're going to tell. You know, they had a loved one pass away that they had insurance or didn't have insurance. And this, you should feel that this is tragic. You don't want to be fake about this. Like, oh my goodness, Miss Mary, what happened? And if they tell you a story, you, you empathize. Like, I am so sorry. And say, look, Miss Mary, my job is to make sure that your family never has to have that experience when that happens to you. We got to get this taken care of for you so that we don't have to worry about it. But here's the thing. It's got to be affordable, okay? I'm sh and I say that that's a, if you can get them to agree to that, it's a, it's game over. Right. Um, so that's huge. If you can get them to reciprocate in that sentiment of, uh, I've had to pay for this. I know the heartbreak and the burden of this. Um, you a morbid way to, to look at it is you're, you're poking at an open wound, but you do it with love to get them to, especially if they're not real motivated to get them to see like, your family is going to have to deal with this if you don't do something about it. Well, that, so I, I think that's huge. As, as human beings, we learn from experience. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's never experienced that before, there's, there's no empathy. There's no, there no, there's no sympathizing. But when you have somebody who has gone through that, I actually experienced that over the weekend. If somebody's experienced that recently, yeah, understand it so much better and your words come through and register a lot, lot more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I think that's huge. Um, the next thing I like to do before I really kind of get into the actually qualifying them is tell them that the, explain the difference between whole life and term. And this is a pretty simple explanation. I start with term term is like companies that, you know, I name, name a couple companies that they're familiar with. They've seen on TV or whatever. They're going to go up in price and you know, eventually they're going to expire. Um, term and I'll say, look, term has its place. It's good for people who are young and working. If they die, their family needs their income, but everybody, most people anyway, outlive that term. And then, so then I make terms sound for these people that it's just a horrible fit. I'm not saying they're inherently bad for what they're meant for, but it's for this person, it's a horrible fit, but I don't outright say that. Then I describe a whole life. So whole life is just that Miss Mary. It's good for your whole life. It never goes up in price. And I'm, you know, you know, um, I'm pointing to, you know, making points on my fingers. Like, it never goes up in price. It never cancels. It never expires. If you ever had to borrow against it, I don't recommend doing this, but you can borrow against that. It builds some cash value. Um, now, I'm assuming that you're going to, this is important, you're going to do the whole life, right? 
And if they say yes, they're saying they're going to do the whole life policy. They're going to buy a policy. So I'll say that again. Now, now whole life, um, you know, it's just that, Miss Mary. It's good for your whole life. It never goes up in price. It never cancels, never expires. Ideally, it's going to start immediately, and it's going to build that cash value for you. Now, you're going to do that whole life, right? And I'll, if you ask me a million times, I'll say it the exact same way every time because that is so powerful. At this point, you're probably a buy down number, tie down number four or five in the presentation. And so, so then, then you go back and recap. Um, no, 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 you do discounts first. Sorry. So at this point, what I like to do is to do three discounts. And the whole purpose of the discount is really just to find out if they have a bank or not. Because if you're dealing with a direct express card, you want to know there's only it's a limited amount of carriers that are going to draft that correctly. So uh, closing in the midst of just getting the discount is huge too. So I just say like this, um, you know, you've been living here for how long? Mr. More than two years, right? Okay, perfect. Uh, you've got a valid driver's license, state ID. Okay, perfect. I'm making marks on my paper. And I say, look, you, you, do you use a local bank here in town? Or and they'll say, yeah. I'm like, awesome. Which bank do you use? And if it's a bank account, I say, okay, is that a checking or savings? And I make them say, because at this point, this is where they're going to tell you if they have a direct express car and say, now, does your social security go directly to that bank? They say, yeah, okay. Is that the first, the third, or one of the Wednesdays? Um, and they'll tell you, okay, it's the first. Now, when something happens, who are we cutting a check to? And the reason I do that is because I want them to associate the pain of them paying that premium every month to the pleasure of their family being protected. So the very next question I ask is, who are we cutting a check to? Um, your daughter, what's her name? Kayla. Okay, perfect. So then I'll go back and I'll recap. I'll say, okay, been here for more than two years. Um, you know, they, they, uh, you've got a valid driver's license. You use fifth, third bank. You get paid on the first of each month and that money is going to Kayla. You want to do whole life insurance. Um, but it's gotta be affordable. Okay. Circle that start. Okay. Afford it. You know, definitely going to look at that. Um, that all sounds correct, right? Perfect. So at that point, any objections that were going to come up are going to come up. And you've, you've, created a, you, you've created a motion. You've got their buy down. They're basically telling you they're buying a policy. Now you just have to go and qualify them. And so by the time you lay out your three prices, you go through the options, um, they're just going to pick one. They're, because you've already determined that you're on their side. You're fighting for them. You know, when you're shopping around for them, I like to scroll through my quota real quick just just so they can see all the companies that are available and it's a very powerful tool because any objection that was going to come up i don't use my bank account um you know i i want to think about this uh i can't afford this i've already dealt with every single thing throughout the presentation and so by the time you by the time you get there you've already done all the work it's just them picking out the plan that that works best for them and so and i can do all of these things in the process of, of, of 10 to 15 minutes. And at any point in time, they can stop me and I can determine if this person's a time waster. I can determine if this place doesn't care, or if this person doesn't care about their family, if they're not interested. And so at any point in time, you can stop a presentation and leave and go get to the next person and say, well, awesome. You know, we got this information to you, John. Um, you know, I got a bunch of people to see. I'm going to get out of your hair. Okay. And you're, also, you're gone. Yeah. So I've seen you do this. You've also eliminated the, the the mistake that happens too often with an inexperienced agent of getting all the way to the finish line, needing to go ahead and get the information for the account, and then they tell you they've got a direct express. That right there is, mm -hmm. is defeat yep. that you've done yep. the entire time, and it happens too often with a new producer. Absolutely. I love, part of it. I, I love how you do the discounts. Uh, that was something I took from you when we rode together. Um, I think it's, I think it's invaluable because of what you just said. It gets it all out of the way right then and there. If there's something that's going to come yep. up, you're going to get it right after you go through that. Absolutely. And, and that, and, and again, it's important to do that right in conjunction with getting the beneficiary's name. You don't want to just say, Oh, your son. Okay. What's his name? And you're right. I spelled that for me. So they're physically spelling their loved one's name. That's going to get the check. And I'm as if I'm writing a check right there. And it's just so important because the, 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 the biggest pain point for these people is that it's going to cost premium. They're already on a fixed income, but you have, they have to see the finish line that that's the reason they're doing this is for their son or their daughter or their grand, their grandbabies or whatever it is. And 
you know, unfortunately, I wish this was more of a logical sale than an emotional sale. If it's a logical sale, everybody would have it. Be like car insurance. We would just be order takers, but this is an emotional sale. And we, uh, the word uh, manipulation gets a bad rep. There's a, there's a guy named Tom that talks about this. Manipulation um, is bad if it's used for, for evil purposes. But all you're doing is you are helping them get in the proper state of mind to make the right decision for their family. And if you can stand behind your product, you stand behind who you are as a person, um, coaching them through that is technically manipulation. I mean, I don't really know what else to say, but it just looks, it's looked at in a bad light because what you're doing is you're helping them um, make that proper decision by putting things in a certain place to make sure it's in the proper context and they're weighing things. They're weighing the pain of a payment versus the pleasure of giving, protecting their family and the pleasure of the protecting their family should greatly outweigh the pain of making that payment. And so all these things are huge. You're also saving them from themselves. In this situation. Absolutely. That's one thing that Absolutely. I've, seen, I've seen you do it. And it, when it's like, look, it's just, when it's just one of those normal objections, I just don't want to deal with it. Um, at the end of the day, you are saving them from themselves and they are always mm -hmm. better for it. You and I wrote some, some business together. That business is still on the books. It's still paying. And I remember the demeanor when we first got to that home compared to when we left that home. Was she was giving us hugs. Night and day. She took a picture. Yeah. We wanted a picture. It was, it was hug city. We were happy. I'm going to be saying, hey, baby, I'm going to be sending you to my family now. You make sure to get a hold of them. That's Absolutely. how it was. And that's what's going to happen. They appreciate you. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So I think, yeah. I think what you covered is, is it's, it's huge just from the simple aspect that you're treating them with respect, which I've always seen you do, but you're also going to lead them to something that is beneficial to them at the end of the day. And you're getting all of the objections out of the way. Yeah. I, I think um, I'll say it this way. Honor is the currency for prosperity. I really sincerely believe that if you can honor another human being um, for who they are and where they're at in their life and help them, um, that, that is going to, propel you into the goal or the solution. Um, if you're willing to put somebody else first, and I know you're selling and you're making money with commissions and all that, but if you're willing to put somebody first and really see their needs um, and what, what's a, a great solution for them, um, that goes a long way. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, but. And anybody in, in a, else, yeah. you did it. Look at number six right here. 97.84. Now I think we're still missing. Yeah, it. nothing. Yeah, not everything's reported yet. So it's all it's all right there. <laughs> it's in the pudding. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, I was still waiting on a couple apps, but well, it was a big, big week, man. It was awesome. Um, I know that I was fired up because I, I call you throughout the day when I'm, you know, obviously the agent hotline that we have, um, hitting you up, seeing how you're doing. You do the same when I'm out and about on the weekends as well. But uh, it was awesome to see you have that. That weekend, it's crazy to not say week, but that weekend. Um, mm -hmm. And I look forward to seeing how we do on this next podcast. I think next, we get a lot of messages come to us about topics and stuff like that. The next one seems to be, there's there's a few different ones, but I'm excited to see how it turns up. But uh, approach, I think, is something we're going to end up talking uh, a bit about. Uh, a lot of people are afraid that they're doing it the wrong way. Uh, you know, They want to hear how you do it. They want to see from a pro's perspective you know, how do you, how do you approach the door for a $9,000 weekend? So that's probably, we'll do a teaser right now. That's probably what we'll touch on next week. Uh, whether it be appointment setting, door knocking and we'll rock and roll and get this bad. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe I'll have to set it up where I do a presentation. We can film like a canned presentation or something, you know, I think that would be really helpful too. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you being my partner in crime on this podcast each and every week. Now we're in video. I love it, man. Um, Having a blast. So uh, it's good to look at my ugly mug and my unfortunate fandom of Cleveland sports. Uh, it's heartbreaking. But that's uh, something I will not be apologetic for. <laughs> oh, I don't apologize. I just, I'm just, I'm used to getting my heart broken. So you know, it's all good. I'm a fragile human. Well, and uh, we'll do it all over again next week. All right, brother. Have a good one.